What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back in Insurance Auto Auctions here in Oklahoma City for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. How about a little Hyundai? Nope, I didn't think so. We're gonna pass on that Toyota. Ah, some of you, some of you are just diehard Toyota fanatics, man. I get so many people complaining that I don't show enough Toyotas on the channel. So here you go. I'm gonna show you, I don't even know what this is. Toyota RAV4, all right? Here's your Toyota. Oh, it's crunched in the back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She's yeah. She got she, she got hit pretty good in the back. Uh, not much of a reason to look at this too much, right? Other than you just wanted to see it. So here it is. Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. A Toyota on the channel, guys. Here it is. I can't believe we're doing this. This is like the biggest thing I think we have ever done here. I'm totally kidding. 2015. A little bit older. Honestly, though, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, I got people out there that think that I hate Toyota, man. They're like, you hate Toyota. Toyota is the, br the best brand. Honda is the best brand. Well, she fires right up. Listen, I say to each their own, all right? Forgive me for not really liking Toyota. I don't hate Toyota, and I don't hate Honda. I, I, no, not at all, man. I don't look at them, generally speaking, and this is going to offend some people, but these, these these vehicles don't impress me. They don't, and I know, but yet you're looking at a Hyundai. Yes, yes, I'm looking at a Hyundai. You know why? Because Toyotas and Hondas hold their value. Even salvaged Toyotas and Hyundais hold their value. I will give credit where credit is due. Toyota builds some great cars, guys. Honda builds some great cars. Uh, if I hated them, I wouldn't be sitting here telling you how great they are. This one's got 141,000 miles on it. Air conditioning's ice cold. Everything probably works in this. I'll bet, I'll bet the windows work. See? Uh-oh. Well, there we go. The window lock was on. The windows work. Air conditioning works. I'll bet it goes into gear. Yep. Forwards. Yep. Brakes are good. Steering feels great. It's nice for what it is. It's just not my cup of tea. And they carry such a premium. Everybody knows that Han and Toyota make great cars and therefore people want them. It's just not something that particularly excites me, especially for the premium that you have to pay for the vehicle. With that said, I like it. All right, I do, I like it. If I could buy it for a reasonable price, I would absolutely jump on it, but as we all know, these things are going to go for good money. And let's take a look. Let's see how bad it is back here. Can we even open this anymore? Probably not. Well, it's, it's, there we go. My concern is the pan. And, and this is exactly what I was concerned about. Uh, the pan has been pushed back significantly, guys. This is, I mean, it is kinked. The body filler has cracked. I mean, this is, it's fixable. Absolutely, it's fixable. Is this something that I want to take on? No, man, not it, <laughs> not at all. Then again, truthfully, if you don't mind the aesthetics, you could drive it like this. The hatch still works, right? And the benefit is you don't have to worry about somebody rear-ending you and you don't have to worry about getting a dent or a ding on it. You throw your tire back down there, close it up, and just, just use it. Rebuild the title, one and done, man. Down the road you go. It's the perfect commuter car. Now you could call this a beater with a heater and an air conditioner. All right, moving on. Let's see what else we can find over here. Nissan, I'll tell you one thing, I'm not a big fan of Nissan. That is one brand that I generally just don't like. Uh, Honda's Toyotas? No, you guys read me wrong on that. All right. I just showed some love to Toyota. Maybe we'll see a Honda out here and we'll take a look at a Honda just so we can appease the people that are angry with me for not showing enough of them. Maybe we should look at Volkswagens too. Not really. Not, <laughs> not really. Oh, 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 guys. I may have just found the star of the video and this, okay. Okay. I'm not going to get excited. I'm not going to get excited. I'm not gonna get excited. I'm, I'm excited. Please be a V8. Please be a, please be a V8. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh man. Okay. Even if it's a V6, I'll take this one. It's gonna be a V6, guys. I think I just found 
the thumbnail for today's video. Are you ready? Yeah? Will you take a look at that beauty? One of my favorite generations, and I know, uh, I know 60s, I, I get it, but I'm talking like modern time Camaros. There's something about this body style that I have always loved and adored, man. Uh, I don't know if it's the, the, the contrast with the black that's recessed way under the hood and these tiny little rectangular lights or just the general shape. I, I really don't know exactly what it is about this car. I even love, I would not change the factory wheels. Never. I would never change the factory wheels. This car is it for me. The problem is, number one, if you find them in a V8, people want way too much money for them. What year, 94? Is this a 94? Yeah, 94 Chevy Camaro. This is going to be a V6, unfortunately. Yeah, she's gonna be a V6 with some pipes, which is nice. They put some pipes on it. How about, oh, oh. Uh, that just killed it. I, I, I'd buy it. I mean, not now, not, not, no, that's, that's uh yeah that's that's too much what a beautiful car this was even as a v6 don't think for a minute that i would not have bought this and driven it all day absolutely let's pop the hood i don't remember what they had in 1994 as far as the v6s i'm guessing uh i'm assuming it's a 3800 but i i really don't know it could be like a 3100 I can't, I, I can't remember, 94, that was so long ago. 2.8 liter? No. It's not gonna be a 2.8 liter, although back in the day, they did put 2.8s in their Camaros. It's a 3.4, I totally forgot about the 3400. It was a, it was a decent motor. Decent power output, I mean, really, not too bad. The problem is, is the way they, they stuff these engines in here, uh, it's so hard to work on them, guys. You've got this giant cowl in the way. The windshield, the dashboard is literally over the whole back of the engine. About half of the engine, maybe a little more, is covered. So when you have to do things like lower intake manifold gaskets, and believe me, you will do those on these engines. I don't care what it is, 2.8 liter, uh, 3100, 3400. You will end up doing lower intake manifold gaskets. You will most likely eventually end up doing uh, head gaskets as well on these. It's, it's just a fact of life. Um, very difficult to do uh, with it stuffed in here like this. Damn it, it's too bad this thing is... It's obviously been repainted. I can see places where the paint's been oversprayed. I don't care. I so would have jumped on this, man. Even being a V6. Even being a V6. Miles 201. Wow, somebody drove this. Uh-oh. It doesn't go into there we go it was in it was literally sitting in neutral it could have just rolled off ah oh, what a shame pop the hatch air conditioning i bet it works too someone took such good care of this we got a, an abs light and that's it good oil pressure good voltage it's even got a little bit of gas in it oh man the window is still trying to work that's sad it, this is honestly sad even the exhaust note sounds decent in this guys and the ac by the way does work it it does we have we have cold air conditioning as well listen to this exhaust uh you could have fooled me Probably not when it took off. <laughs> I'm sure it sounds raspy as hell, but sitting here just idling? It actually sounds pretty damn mean. Wow. Well, can't win them all, right? That is a, uh, that is a shame. She was a gorgeous car. Uh, whoever owned it, man, maybe you'll see my video. Maybe you'll drop a comment below and tell us, you know, what happened, how long you owned it. I'm just gonna say it right now, man. Some people will make fun of these cars, like, oh, it's a V6. Listen, not every car has to be fast, right? Not every car has to be a V8. It's what I prefer. I prefer quick cars. I prefer a V8. 
but don't get it twisted. I would absolutely drive one of these with a V6 all day long. Beautiful car to whoever used to own it. Very sorry that you lost it the way you did. I knew it was gonna be wrecked. I did. I didn't see the damage, but I knew it because every time I find something that I am highly interested in, it turns out to be totally crashed. And I know it's to be expected because it is a salvage auction, but you have to remember, I, I spend my time walking past all the salvage stuff and I'm actually out here looking for what I call diamonds in the rough, meaning there are a lot of salvage cars out here. Obviously, it is an insurance auction after all, but there are a ton of really good quality vehicles, older and newer, hiding out here amongst, well, all the roughage. Once you get through all of the rough crap out here, you can really find some good deals. Like, okay, let's be honest. We don't like Mini Coopers, right? Well, not exactly. I kind of do. I, it, to an extent, I, it, I can't explain it, okay? Would I drive this? Yes. Yeah, I actually would. Um, kind of like it. It's definitely riced out, but there's something about that ricer look that it has that I really enjoy. 2005 Mini Cooper S supercharged. Looks like maybe it's been lowered a tad bit. Like, why do you need to lower a Mini Cooper? But, but okay, fine. Uh, I'm guessing vandalism, because I don't see any hail damage. They took out the back glass. What else did they take out? They took out the side glass. Okay, it needs two windows. I happen to have a company locally that can handle that no problem at all. They do a great job and look good as new. It's called Los Primos Auto Glass on 23rd Street. They'll even be able to tint the windows to make it look exactly like it did before, and it probably wouldn't cost me anything. So why is this here? So somebody somebody got mad, and they, they beat the hell out of it. Maybe it was the owner. Maybe it broke. That's what minis do, right? Aren't they made by BMW? Could be wrong about that. I, I'm definitely not a, uh, I'm not a mini kind of guy. You know what I mean? Um, I also don't know how to open the hood on this either. I, like, I know literally nothing about this car. It's got a... A switch down here look at this huh i wonder what that does there's some wires hanging out on the floor you know don't know what those do either um so opening the hood would be nice manual transmission it's got power uh huh so opening the hood on one of these cars this is perplexing uh maybe if somebody knows how you actually Open the hood on this, does it? Oh, it's already, somebody's already got it part way. Oh, right there, really? How did, I don't even know. Okay, so that's it. And then you got these little eyes here. This is, oh, that's, that's not normal, right? We just have this, this comes through here and just blows to the air filter, I get it. It's to blow cold air to the air filter. Uh, what do we have? A Typhoon intake. This is, looks like, the original um, intercooler right here. I don't believe this is a water to air. I think it's just an air to air intercooler. Got your little mini engine right there. Looks like somebody recently replaced a motor mount. It's shiny. Let's check the oil. Oh, let's check the oil. There we go. Good God. Let's take a look. Uh, it's got some. Not much. But it's, it's, it's got enough oil. You should be able to start it up. Strut brace, I'm pretty sure most of this is factory aside from, uh, I don't know, I think that's factory too. I think it's just this silicone sleeve that goes over it. It's not coil, probably aftermarket, aftermarket plug wires as well. Obviously aftermarket cold air intake. Uh, not sure how much horsepower that actually gives you, but yeah, fine, whatever. Let's sit in it. Let's try to start it. It's actually quite roomy. Boy, somebody, Somebody really loved Mini Coopers, guys. <laughs> Good God. They were going crazy on this. Let's we'll see what the mileage is, too. 163,000 miles. Wow. Wow. I didn't know Minis ever made it that far, guys. I, I, these things, okay. Air conditioning. That's a big deal to me. Air conditioning is kind of important. You got power windows, and it works. What about this one? And it works. 
You got both power windows that work. You got a Pioneer CD player that works. What do you think the chances are that the clutch is any good? I don't know. What does this switch over here do? Let's turn it on, see if it does anything. No, not that I can see. Not a clue what it does. Air conditioning, by the way, feels like it's trying to get cold. We have gas gauge, temperature gauge, and we have a TPMS light on and a seatbelt light on. And this is an insurance car. So she's probably salvaged. All right, let's see if we got gears. Where's the clutch? I drove my Viper here today. So, and how do you, okay, forwards? Yep, um, I'd love to go backwards. I think you, has this got an interlock? No, just, do you push down? Do you pull up? Oh, there we go. I think that's reverse. Yeah, that's reverse. So it's got backwards. It's got forwards. E-brake works. Um, air conditioning though. It was, what is this? How do you, oh, there we go. There we go, there we go. Somebody's got all these turned off. The air conditioning does work, but it's not. It seems like it gets kind of cold and then it gets, and then it gets hot and then it gets cold and then it gets hot. So let's, uh, how do you, uh oh, here we go. We got a little sticker on the steering wheel here. Steering feels good, brakes feel good, wipers work. I mean, okay, so it's got a lot of miles, but it started and ran on its own. We have no warning lights other than a TPMS light, which may just be a bad sensor, unless it's got a flat tire that I missed. I didn't see a flat tire. She's a little rough. She's a little rough. Do we have matching tires? What do we got? We got Hankook. We have, what is this? I don't know what this one is. Uh, that is not a Hankook. This is something else, a Velaz, Velaz. Uh, you got an aftermarket uh, John Cooper Works exhaust. What do we got back here? Uh, not a clue what that is. And then we got a Hankook on front. I'm assuming it's got a pair on the front and a pair in the back. I'm, uh, I'm kind of interested in this one. I don't really want to be. AC clutch is spinning. You can hear the cooling fans coming and going, coming on, turning off. I'm assuming that maybe she's a little low on Freon. The, uh, there we go. That just pops right back into place there, guys. I'm not going to close the hood all the way because uh, somebody else may want to come out here and open it. And I'll be honest with you, if it's totally closed, I have no clue how to open that. So it's unique. It's interesting. I love the red. Um, I kind of like the stance. I like the checkers on the top and everything. I, li I, I like it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is I, I'm trying not to, but I can't help it. I like the little mini. So I went ahead and threw it on the watch list. We'll see what happens. I know some of you probably spotted this Shelby over here. So we'll walk over and just take a quick look at it. Obviously, it's pretty significantly wrecked. Looks like it does come with some parts though. Somebody threw a stick-on Mustang badge on the side of their Shelby truck. Why would you do that? Oh, okay. Not my truck, right? Looks like we got a hood. A smashed up fender, maybe. No, maybe it's all right. A headlight. Yeah, it's all damaged. So you get a bunch of broken parts and another Mustang badge. <laughs> okay. I really don't know why you would have stuck Mustang badges to the side of your pickup truck, but hey, there's your snake, Shelby F-150, 700 horsepower. That's a lot, not gonna lie, that's a, uh, that's a lot. Oh, we got a bag full of Ford goodies back here. Books, all kinds of stuff, man, I'm not gonna go through it. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like this is scraping up the paint, just being left open like that, so that's a shame. Beautiful truck though. I gotta give it to him. Ouch. Dang. Look how far that's been bent back. This thing took a pretty hard hit. No doubt about it. So probably gonna have some frame damage. Looks like we got some damage underneath as well. They've marked, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was nasty. Looks like we got some carbon fiber bits under here too. This may, wow. I wish we could see more, but gonna just have to leave well enough alone on this one absolutely beautiful truck you think it's got power think we could start it probably not with that plastic on it probably not a good idea 
Oh, I love it. Yeah, this is this is really nice. Mileage, 70,000, 229.6. All right. Yeah, I'm not going to fire it up, guys. Not with all that plastic sitting there uh, on top of the engine bay. Nope, not going to mess with it. Let's grab the bag. Let's continue. I did put that on my watch list, though. Well, I, I, why, I don't know. I, I, I'm i probably going to regret that if I buy it. Current bid is $50. The auction's tomorrow. Um, being an insurance car, it's probably a pure sale. Uh, they won't tell you that. But I'd be willing to bet that it's probably going to be a pure sale. The cars I really want to look at are actually sitting over there. But generally speaking, the cars over there are not for sale. So... No point really looking at them if we can't buy them. They will come up in due time. So let's see what else we got out here. Oh man, that's a clean little Beamer. Look at that old 3 Series. Oh wow, I like this. Oh, uh, she took some damage to the side. I mean, that's okay. It's not that bad. You get that paint transfer off, she'd look a lot better. Put the little... uh sticky things back on the side those little protectors and it would look somewhat respectable again unfortunately these cars just aren't worth anything it's a 323 use only bmw long life oil look they even kept some oil under the hood for you apparently it uh apparently it burns a little bit is it damaged on this side no, just the other side. Well, it's get it, uh, it's got basically guys, this car's got damage everywhere. <laughs> Front bumper is kind of hanging off, the fender is damaged over here. These are some cool wheels. I've never seen these before. Uh, I like them. I, I like those wheels a lot. The paint is faded. Oh, we got a hornet. Let's whoa shit. Oh hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Nope, 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 nope. They are all over this car, man. Wow. Okay, I guess we need to really be paying attention out here, guys. Whew. Can I, can I at least just look? Run and drive, 160,000 miles of manual transmission. It's an automatic. Okay, let's walk away from this one, guys. I, I'm sure not trying to get stung and attacked by a swarm of hornets out here today. We're gonna pass. I do know that somewhere out here is a PT Cruiser, if I remember right, or an HHR or something, and it was listed all over the place, Hornet's Nest. So I'm wondering if maybe they have been moving around, building some new nests out here in different cars. Uh, that's what it seems like to me. So we're gonna, we're just gonna have to be really, really careful. Damn. These rocks, man. I'm about rolling my ankle every three steps. Okay. I feel like we're we're a little bit safer. I don't see any hornets anymore. That was nice. Before it got a complete facelift. Talk about a transformation. Golly. Chrysler 300. Still not seeing really anything I'm all that interested in, guys. We'll come across something, though. You just got to... Put in the work, walk through each one of these rows of cars, and you will find something eventually. There's that Chrysler 300 that I keep looking at. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not. I, I thought about it, and I just, there's, I'm not going to buy that car. There's no reason to. I still like it, though. Even though it's a, a 3.6 liter Pentastar, I still like it. Cadillac, dang, she took a, yeah, I'm not going to walk through that mud, neither. It's a Cadillac CTSV. Oh man. I've been wanting one of these for a long time too. I want the coupe though. That's the thing. If I was to get one, I want a coupe. This one is just This is this one's this one's trashed. So pass on a CTSV. Unless you need a powertrain. Guarantee you, she's got a powertrain to get good. Let me just open the door. You know, I can't help it. I can't help it. I've been wanting one of these for so long. You can tell this thing's got so much suspension damage. Manual transmit. Oh, man. <sighs> Smells like weed. The roof is caved in here and over there and over there, too. Nah, I think the chassis has been tweaked on this pretty bad, guys. Pass. 
if I'm gonna get one, I want one that's in a little bit better shape than that, especially because of how much they bring. People will pay crazy money for them because the engine and transmission are worth an insane amount of money, guys. Like, no joke. People pay top dollar. And uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a parts breaker, you know what I mean? I'm not cutting things up and trying to sell engines and transmissions. There's plenty of places out there that do it. They make a business out of it. They're great at it. I can't compete with them. That, that's, that got hot. That got, that got real hot. I mean, I know it's hot out here today, but damn, paint's literally melting off of cars out here today. Bronco? Nope. Another little mini. <laughs> Oh, I would love to know how to open the hood on this. I really would. 2013 Mini Cooper. I think the other one was cooler, though. The other one just had so much going on. So much going on. Uh, and I'll take a manual all day versus an automatic. Challenger V6, hard pass, Audi. I feel bad for whoever bought, if they did buy it, that HHR, whatever the one that was full of Hornets, Whoever bought that, somebody, somebody's got their work cut out for them, man, because those things were everywhere, and I didn't even open the door on it. I can't imagine if you walk up and open the door, it's going to be a bad, bad day. Okay, hold on. I see a few things on the next row that are looking pretty good. We saw this last time. Eh, low mileage, though, 52,000 miles. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is an easy fix unless I miss something. I don't really, I don't need another Corvette. I already have a C5. Is this a manual? It's a manual, maybe. It is a manual. Son of a gun. Okay, it's something to consider. Uh, these panels are replaced easily, guys. Rear quarter panels like this, they just pop off. Now, there may be some underlying damage. No, I don't see any damage under there. So... Yeah, these quarter panels here, they just unbolt. Same thing with the back bumper. It's just, it's its Legos, you know? The stuff literally just unbolts, put new parts on. Um, what else do we have? That fender, they're plastic. You could, well, no, you're not saving that, never mind. Headlights, probably savable. Bumper, you could probably save that bumper too. So you're gonna need a quarter panel and a fender. And then if you're lucky, you find it in yellow. You know what? I'm gonna put this on the list. Or am I? Did this thing take a hit direct? It did. It took a hit directly in the back. Ah, I see what's going on here. There's more damage than what you're seeing. There's more damage than what you're seeing. Take a look at this wheel. The bumper is pushed in to the tire. Guys, something got folded up under here. You can't see it. It's going to be some kind of underlying damage, but yeah, this took a hard hit. I'm betting there's frame damage that pushed everything forward into the wheel. That's why this is all buckled. This is buckled. This is overlapping the bumper now. Nah. Nope, it'd be great, in my opinion, for the LS. All day long. LS1 with a manual transmission? Great. The problem with those are they use torque tubes. So, uh, good luck figuring that, that out, you know. The LS engine, though, you could probably use it. Transmission, I'm not so sure about. It's pretty unique to the, uh, to the Corvette. All right. Let's see what else we got over here. Uh, Mercedes. Should we? No, I don't. I don't, I don't want to. It's an insurance car, GL430, 4, 450? Let's just not, let's not do Mercedes, guys. I'm, um, no. However, I did see this Saab over here and it kind of got my attention. So we're gonna do the right thing. We're gonna make you wait for the next video. Thumbnail will be this Saab. I'm sorry, guys. I, I need the views desperately. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now listen, it's hot out here. I'm gonna go cool off, drink a little bit of water, and uh, the video's already close to 30 minutes long anyway. So we're gonna push this one off till the next episode, guys. If you enjoyed this video, though, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one. Thank you